Hello and welcome to this third part in this series where I've found a free strategy for trading Forex and we're going to test it and I'm going to run you through the development process of correctly backtesting and then developing it, adjusting it, hopefully making it better, making it into something usable. You've already seen in the first part and the second part the rules for the strategy and the start of the development process. If you haven't seen the videos, you might want to watch those first. I expect I'll put the links in the description down below. And in this part, we're going to carry on with the development process, look at more times of the day to trade, and going to look at stop losses and take profit, and maybe more to try and get something, try and get an edge in this four hour bar strategy. So I'm going to go over to the computer now and I'll walk you through exactly what I'm doing. So we've already looked at a couple of start times to start trading and we found out that starting at 6am or 10am they both actually work. So this next development what I'm going to do is look at the end trade or the end time. What I'll do is I'm actually going to not worry about the start time at the moment so put the start time back to midnight so we're trading all day long and we're going to look at the end time individually first i've already run this optimization so we can look at the report of that one now and these are the results that show from running optimization here the end time from zero through to 2400 hours and they're bad results aren't they because we're, we're trading all day and we haven't used that better start time but the best results you can see are anything from 2200 basically trade all day so what I want to do is I want to leave the end time to trade all day and just work with a, the start time of 600 and 1000 hours in the morning I'm inclined to stay with at the moment starting at 10 a.m. in the morning or 10 hundred hours in the morning. I preferred the strategy performance report from that. Now, using that start time, the next development we're going to do is I'm going to look at choosing a profit target. So this is going to be the first real exit that we're going to use apart from a, a stop and reverse type exit. So I'm going to check probably between, I'm going to use a fixed pip target, probably between 0 and 300 pips and we can look at the results of the optimization report. And here's the results you see, profit target and here's the, the pips. Now I have to mention that uh, 0 0.001, that's actually 10 pips, 20 pips, 30 pips, and so on. Now, looking through these results, the best area, if we're looking at the net profit in this, this row here, we're looking for a reasonable stable area, and the sort of stable area I can see, there, we're looking at in the sort of 40, 43, 49,000, US dollars net profit. So around this area, uh, 46, there's a whole clump around that area. If we go a little bit further, we can see they do start to decline again back into the 30s. So I'm inclined to use, uh, I'm not going to choose the best one, I'm going to choose something in the middle, uh, about 170 pips. That's what I'm going to actually use. So we'll have a look at what 170 pips looks like with a 10 a.m. start and this is the equity curve for that which is okay it's probably better than before and we've got a, a faster exit now um, it's not great uh, by any means so far um, let's have a look at the total trade analysis going to have more trades now we're going to have uh, we've got 123 trades there now uh, versus what was it, 69 trades before? We got a much lower average trade of $307 versus before of $1,250, but that's because we got that 
that many more trades. So for now, we'll keep that level of 170 pips for the take profit. I think it's better remembering back to having no take profit. We had that uh, where it made a lot of money very early on. It wasn't quite so consistent in the equity curve. And we'll move on to the next development and we'll have a look at the stop loss. Again, we're going to look at a, a fixed dollar stop loss. So I actually, I've done the optimization between 0 and 300 pips for the stop loss as well. But I noticed some resu good, good results right around the 300 pip area. Like, So I wanted to go a little bit further, so I re-ran the optimization. I went to 400 pips. So here's the optimization report for the stop loss. Again, between 0 and 400 pips. If I go down, you see it's right down to 400. You can just about see that at the bottom. And I noticed, like I said, there was an area around the 300 that was quite quite a strong, stable area. And I picked two areas. I picked probably 320 pips, which is this one here, and also found that 120 pips... Yeah, around this area was also quite a stable, strong area. Before that, results were bad. After that, results tend to get a little bit worse. Which Now this is it's a little bit strange. It's not really what I'd like to see, but we have to test both these areas. So we can look at the 120 versus the 100, uh, sorry, 320 pips and see how they look. So here's the equity curve using 120 pip stop, still using that 170 pip profit target and a start time of 10 a.m. in the morning. And I don't particularly like the look at this curve whatsoever. Um, I probably won't even bother looking at the total trade analysis because I don't like the curve. What I do want to do is have a look at uh, the 320 pip stop. And this is the chart of the or the equity chart of using a 320 pip stop, which is a little bit better. It's not, it's really not that great at all, but it's definitely a little bit better. Although I must say, for a strategy where we don't plan on being in the trade all that long, 320 pips on pound dollar is a very large stock. I can tell you that from my experience, and I'm not not too happy with that. So I've actually concluded that. Trying to optimise these profit targets and stop losses with this original signal of the four hour chart, I just don't really like it. I think we're probably forcing a good result here, which I don't like. So I'm probably not going to use either of these strategies. I'm not going to go much further with those. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually look at going back to the beginning. So we're going to be trading all day, still taking that original trigger from the four hour bar but I'm going to be going back with trading all day and probably first of all I'll look for a profit target but I'm not going to use a fixed profit target next time I'm actually going to use a, a percentage of the setup bars range so I'll explain more in the next video of that I'm going to be taking the stop loss and the profit target using a percentage of that four hour bar set up and see what difference that makes and then carry on I'll probably change the exit I'll probably do an exit at the end of the day and we'll look at trading hours again so bear with me stay with me watch the next video to see how this development of this strategy unfolds and hopefully still hoping that we're going to get something good out of it at the end